Hi, it's Joe Ferrer with Geek Toolkit, and today I'm very excited to talk about this lamp next to me. The style is called a Veroni lamp, and it's up by Mark Love on Thingiverse, the 3D files for it. I 3D printed it. It took 70 hours, and it was an epic 3D print, probably the biggest thing I've ever 3D printed. When I got done, I added the LEDs to it and the WLED library and some electronics, and I'm just shocked at how good it came out. So what I want to share in this video is what is Veroni? I'll talk about how I 3D printed it and try to give you some tips on how to be successful if you try to make one of these. Then I'll talk about the electronics on it and how I hooked those up and then how I installed the WLED library. Basically at the end of this video you'll have everything you need to build one of these. Before we get into that let's do a quick demo. First thing I want to talk about is who is Georgi Veroni and what is a Veroni diagram? So Georgi Veroni was a Russian mathematician from Ukraine. And you can see his bio here from Wikipedia. He died at age 40, but he came up with this Veroni diagram, which is a mathematical formula. And it does what's called tessellation as a way of describing it. So this is a 2D plane. And the best description I've heard for this is imagine you have a hospital's. Here's two hospitals across town from each other. And this hospital, the dark green, are all of the patients that would be closest to this hospital. And the light green would be all the patients closest to this one. Now say we have open up a hospital right here. Now we have gray is all the patients closest to this person. And the mathematical formula that calculated this shape is what's called the Veroni, generates what's called the Veroni diagram. Now what's cool is, as we open up hospitals, then you start getting this almost biological cellular uh, dispersion here. And this mathematical formula is what was responsible for this lamp. Now you can see other cellular designs like this. There's quite a few Veroni designs out there. And I think they're they're all beautiful, but Markov, what he did that was different is a lot of these are kind of the negative space. You can see that they've got the holes here. Let's see if I can bring this one up. This one here, the pattern's there and it's cut out, but it's basically a cellular shape. It's it's open. And what Markov did with his, let's see if I can show this. Yeah, so you can see these are actually filled in. He didn't just cut the outside, he actually filled it in and then he has a square on the inside of here for the light. So you can see the square opening. This goes almost all the way through it so the light can be put in there and you can see these shapes are all filled in. They're not just holes inside to the middle here. Okay, so the next thing is how to print this. This is what the model looks like on Thingiverse by Markov, and the description didn't have a lot of hints. 
As I've noted, this is a 70 hour print, so you wanna be very careful about this. Make sure your filament roll is fresh and you've got a lot of filament ready to go. I did a 0.3 millimeter resolution. If you go smaller, it will be tighter, but of course it's gonna take a lot longer. Make sure that you watch your temperatures and that you're ready to do some what's called bridging. Uh, you can do temperature towers to test your bridging and retraction towers. Basically, you wanna dial in your filament, make sure that you can bridge cleanly, and I'll show you that in a second. This is what the print looked like. I printed it upside down based on a recommendation I found in the comments, and you'll find some other things on Thingiverse in the comment section that will help you out there. Printing it upside down onto a raft though did mean that I had some cleanup to do once I ripped the raft off the top. So if you can get away with a brim, then it'll be a lot better. But given a 70 hour print, I didn't want to put anything to chance. Also watch your height. You can see how close I get to the top here. The next thing I'm going to show, this is a close up of the bridging. And you can see they're not too big, but they are there. Okay, I had a 3D animation for this, but this is probably going to be a lot better. This is the wiring diagram. And I'm going to show a very simple wiring concept. We're going to go from 5 volts here to 5 volts on your RGB strip. The ground, GND, goes to ground here. And D4, which is actually GPIO2, goes into DN. This is how to wire this piece right here, which is your D1 mini to your RGB strip. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is talk about this hole at the bottom. This is where the light's gonna go in. I decided on using a round piece of pipe and a PVC pipe's just really inexpensive. The nice thing about having a round pipe and spiraling the lights down is the patterns look really, really good and you don't have to do any cutting and splicing. So despite this being cheap and dirty, it actually works really, really well. This is the RGB strip I'm using. This is a WS2812 strip, or also known as a NeoPixel strip if you're using the Adafruit branding. The Adafruit strips, I feel, are a little bit easier to use because their pinouts are a little bit clear. But in this case, I took the three wires coming off and I wired them to the D1 Mini as I showed you in the last diagram. Now, the next thing I did is wrapped it around the PVC pipe, and I don't show it in the video, but I actually had to space them out. You see me here duct taping the end? and then placing it in there. And I adjusted it a few times to get the lights evenly spaced. The next thing you wanna do is just tuck the D1 Mini into the, the bottom here and get a USB cable to it. And this will not only power it, but it'll allow you to program it, which is what we're gonna do in the next step. Okay, we're almost home free. We have to do a couple downloads first though, of course, right? One of them is gonna be a bin file. This program here, WLED, which I'll link to in the description, you're going to go here and download it. Now, the thing about downloading it is here's the release. And when you scroll down, you may not see where it is. Expand this asset thing right here. Look for your, this one here, the ESP8266.bin. Grab that one and download it. The next thing you're going to grab is this tool here I'll link to. This is a tool for flashing. Grab the DMG if you're on a Mac or the Xyz. I'm sorry, grab the ones under assets again, down here. Don't click these, these are the antivirus reports. They'll take you to a spot that you don't wanna be because it's hard to get out of it. Um, trying to back out of that page is a pain. So download these here. And when you get them all downloaded, you should get, let's see, you'll have this app here. When you launch that app, it looks like this. And then when you plug in your uh, D1 Mini, you should see a COM port line light up, select that. Uh, select your bin file here. So there's my bin file. Uh, there's my COM port. And I would just say flash. And if everything's successful, it'll say it right here. Once that happens, go back to your WLED site, click on wiki and scroll down to step three. Step three says to connect to the Wi-Fi access point that should now be showing up called WLED AP. If you don't see this, unplug your power on the USB going to your D1 Mini and replug it in. And wait a couple seconds, see if this shows up, if it does connect to it. And this is important too, WLED1234 is the default password. Once you get into there, you should get a UI like this. This UI is basically a way to control the lamp immediately. Now you can also add it to your Wi-Fi network so you don't have to connect to it directly. You can just Give it a name. I gave mine Amber Light Local for my wife because this is her Valentine's Day gift. The way you configure all this is click on config and go into Wi-Fi setup. 
The only other setup that you should have to do is this LED preferences. There's a LED count for how many LEDs that you're using. And then the order, if green, red, and blue seem mixed up, this is where you fix that. If you did any kind of advanced power configuration, you'll want to mess that around in here. One thing I recommend turning on is this preview. This preview will light up a bar across the top here and it shows you what your current pattern is. So you can see I'm doing some kind of fire to the lamp right now. If I go down to effects, here's all those effects I was showing. I can click on solid and then these solid colors, this is how you get all of them to be one color. Oh. There we go. So now I click on green and green is there. If I click on red, the preview will show red. If I click on effects here, then I've got quite a few to select. And the thing is the preview will show you what this intensity bar does. So I can lower the fire intensity and I see I get more of a, like a flicker. If I go up here, I get more of a raging fire. This will be different based on the algorithm. So it's kind of cool to see with a preview what's going on up here. This top one is speed. Uh, speed is really nice because you can have like a gentle fill or you can go really fast. Okay, that's pretty much the software. And what I wanted to go over, this will at this point, you'll be able to build this project. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. If you want to see more projects like this, uh, you guys and gals probably been on YouTube for a while. You know what to do. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell. And if you have any feedback for me, please give me a like on this and uh, you know throw something in the comments. I really appreciate that. I try to reply to every comment and every question I can to help people out. And also when you people get, uh, when people give me tips and tricks, I really appreciate it. I didn't know about the WLED library that actually came in through a couple comments and messages. So thanks so much. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Fair with Geek Toolkit, and I hope you guys build this and have a blast. If you do, let me know. Thanks a lot.